Hey everybody, how's it going? Jeff Shackley here, drum instructor with Freeway Music, and today I am coming to you with a little bit more of a beginner tip. Um, we're going to be looking at playing our hi-hat today with our foot. It might seem like a no-brainer to some of you, but I know when I first started, uh, I would always think of it as like, okay, I hold this pedal down and I get a tight like chick sound, and I let go of it a little bit and I get a sloshy sound. So verse sound, chorus sound. And that's all I thought. And my teacher didn't tell me any more than that for a while. But if he didn't ever bring it up to me, I don't think I ever would have thought, hey, I can actually keep time with this thing. I can do different stuff with this. So this is today just to first off, let you know that it's out there just in case you didn't know. And for those of you who do know but are having issues, let's go over a couple ways that we can also practice it, uses for it, like why we might do that some things like that. So using the hi-hat with your foot is a great way to keep momentum going while you're playing. Um, a lot of times if you're playing, you've got a good beat and you've got tight hi-hat going on and people can really hear that chick going on in the background and then you go to play a fill and you stop playing the hi-hat, you lose your timekeeping. You lose a little bit of that feel and it can actually end up leaving things a little bit empty. And especially if you've got a pretty heavy piece, things are moving a lot, you don't want to leave a whole ton of space all the time. So being able to keep time going with your foot, also extremely useful during that. You don't feel like you're losing anything just because now you want to use your hands to move around the drums. Same thing if you go to like a chorus or a bridge where you might be keeping time on a ride cymbal or like bashing with a ride or a crash or something like that. And you have these big explosive sounds or these really ringy sounds, uh, but you might lose some of the definition of a tight closed hi-hat. So being able to also keep time on your hi-hat with your foot, again, will add a little bit more of that clarity back into your playing while still allowing you to change your timekeeping device and change, uh, you know, change the mood, help the piece move. So how to practice this is pretty simple. Uh, let's go over two of the main ways to play a hi-hat with your foot. Um, first off, keeping quarter notes. One, two, three, four. You know, quarter notes. The other one is eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. Very simple. I like to come up with beats, either make up a beat on my own, or a great tool. If you have a book that you're working out of, this works great for that. Your book will tell you to play uh, play on the hi-hat and then play snare and bass, but it could easily be switched to play on the ride cymbal and start adding some of these things in with your foot. Uh, my favorite drum book is probably the Funky Primer. It's pretty much a standard. If you don't have it, you should change that. It's great. Uh, and let's look at it. Uh, so beat number two is the most standard rock beat in the world. One and three on the bass drum, two and four on the snare drum. Sorry, this thing is being difficult. So one and three on the bass drum, two and four on the snare drum. And you're keeping eighth notes with your timekeeping hand. So like this. Now this is a great beat to start with because again, it is like the most basic drum beat in the entire world. Uh, everybody has played it a million times and ACDC made a career out of it. So all you have to do, as I mentioned, switch your timekeeping hand from your hi-hat over to your ride cymbal. And then let's start out, first things first, let's start out with quarter notes. So we're gonna keep one, two, three, four over here on our foot on the hi-hat and then have our one, two, three, four between the kick and snare. We've got our eighth notes over here. So let's start out. I'm gonna start out just playing the ride cymbal, add in the hi-hat with my foot, and then add in the beat. Let's take a look.
So again, pretty basic. And that's a great way to get started. Most of us, when we haven't done this before, our left leg is almost like a tree trunk, just rooted into the ground. It is not ready to move. So it's a good idea to try, start with your timekeeping device. You can use a ride symbol. You can use a floor tom. You can use a rim or a side of a shell or anything that you want to do, if I haven't said that enough in any of my other videos. Um, start with your timekeeping device with your eighth notes and then add in these quarter notes over here with your foot. And focus on that for a while, just feeling comfortable with it. Another great way to practice um, is do like two limbs at a time. So you can do your right hand and your left foot. Then do your left hand and your left foot. Your right foot and your left foot. And then start adding more in. You can do any three limbs at a time and then get all four limbs in all together. Uh, just different ways to tackle that. The goal is for you to be relaxed and comfortable and feel like you're in control of it. So you want to start slow. You want to start simple. And then slowly start build. Build your tempo. And then after a while, you can start to build the complexity of some of the beats and stuff that you're playing. Um, the next one, again, would be go from quarter notes to eighth notes. So let's try. Same thing. Same beat. Number two in the funky primer. I think the first page is 11. So number two, page 11. And uh, let's play eighth notes on the hi-hat this time. So, whoops, having lots of mic trouble today. Uh, again, not too hard, pretty straightforward. Um, now, I also mentioned being able to use this to play with fills. And uh, honestly, you can also use this for soloing and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, so why don't we take a look at that? I'm going to play that same beat. I'm going to play a fill, play it through a couple times, add in a couple of fills. I'm going to play a couple without hi-hat, and then I'm going to play them with hi-hat. So you can kind of see, hear the difference, uh, you know, having with, without, feel the difference in the movement and the momentum. So let's give it a shot. So as you can hear, with the hi-hat going, you end up, the beat keeps moving. It's not, you know, it doesn't get this feeling of kind of stopping, slowing down that you sometimes get if you let the hi-hat out. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. There are plenty of times that you want to actually leave that space. You can have a big open fill, and that sounds good. But there are lots of songs, songs that maybe are a little bit tighter, are a little bit more movement-oriented, that having that hi-hat going on the whole time is really beneficial to everything. Now, here's a couple other things that you can do. Um, when you keep your time on your hi-hat over here with your foot, uh, it opens up your right hand to be able to do all sorts of things. Now, I already mentioned you can keep time on different drums different surfaces and whatever and that's all cool and whatnot but you know you can also open up different patterns while still having a really solid 
eighth note or quarter note pulse over here on the hi-hat, which can help the rest of the band keep moving. You know, sometimes if we get too focused on a cool, skippy, complicated writing pattern, it's easy to actually speed up, slow down, kind of lose sight of where the beat is. And having this anchor over here, whether it be quarter notes or eighth notes, down beats, or we didn't discuss things like up beats, and I'm playing one and two and three and four, and um, it just helps the rest of the band lock in and stay tight, and that's really important. So again, just so you can hear uh, a little bit of that. There you can see you have the freedom to do more movement, orchestrate your part a little bit more, but you have that anchor, you have that pulse. The other cool thing is uh, you could just keep regular time with your foot like you would with your hand, but then it opens up your hand to do other things. So I brought in this tambourine. <laughs> just as a, as a little show and tell here. But uh, another cool thing, if you're keeping time over here and helping keep that anchor, you can also use the spare hand to do something cool, play another instrument, a shaker, a tambourine. Some people will like, you know, like keep time over here and be playing their main drum set, but have like hand drums over here, kungas, bongos, any of those things, all awesome. But uh, again, it's just a cool different sound you can get while still having your main anchor, your main feel that the rest of your band is used to. So those are the main ways that uh, a lot of us end up using the hi-hat with our foot uh, outside of things like jazz. We can get into jazz at another time. It's also really helpful when you're playing a solo. So when you're playing a solo and you have different ideas that aren't just a constant stream of eighth notes and sixteenth notes and triplets and just a big bombastic blast of notes, when you have actual... Uh, different rhythmical phrases and things that you're looking at, having that hi-hat in there helps. So I'm going to play a little bit of a solo example for you with and without hi-hat, just so you can kind of see how that sounds. Now you can see the first part, there was suspense. There was different, uh, different elements going on. You could feel the spaces a little bit more, and that's all well and good. But when I wanted to add more motion, when I wanted to have a forward push on what I was playing, all I did was add some quarter notes and blamo. It completely changes the feel of everything I'm doing. Even though I'm playing something very similarly, it ups the feel on it. So just remember, playing the hi-hat with your foot, super useful tool. Uh, take it 
low and slow at the beginning. Keep it simple. Uh, again, it's great to play along with examples that you have in any kind of book that you've been working on. Or if you've been playing a song that you really like and it's all over here on the hi-hat, put it over here on the ride cymbal or down here on the floor tom or something and start giving some quarter notes or eighth notes a try with your foot and just see where you get with it. So that will be our lesson for this week. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you next week. Have a good one, guys.